We saw recently at the World Lung Meeting 2019 the presentation of the Caspian data. Caspian is a three-arm randomized trial for patients with untreated extensive stage small cell lung cancer where they're randomized to chemotherapy, platinum, either carboplatin or cisplatin, with etoposide for up to six cycles versus dervalimab plus chemotherapy versus dervalimab plus tremolumumab, an anti-CTLA-4 antibody, plus chemotherapy. And what we saw was a comparison between chemotherapy alone and chemotherapy with dervalimab. We've not yet seen the results from the tremolumumab arm. What we saw there was that the addition of dervalimab the addition of an anti pdl one antibody to chemotherapy improved survival. Uh, we saw an improvement in median survival from 10.3 months to 13 months, hazard ratio 0.73. We saw an improvement in one-year survival rate, and we saw a very favorable toxicity profile. This strategy improved survival without significantly increasing the toxicity. And what really stands out from this study is how remarkably similar it was to Empower 133. If you line up those survival curves, the one-year survival rates with PDL1 and chemotherapy between 52 and 54% versus chemotherapy, 39% in both arms. The, the curve split at about the same area. The hazard ratios, 0 0.70 with atezolizumab, 0.73 with dervalimab. These results really overlap, I think, really validating this strategy. This was not an aberration, this was not a one off. When you add an anti PDL1 antibody to chemotherapy in an all comer population, you see a survival benefit. And the strategy works. It's led to an improvement in survival and really has established new standards of care. We saw some updates from both Empower 133 and Caspian at ESMO 2019. First, we had longer follow-up with Empower 133. And what it showed was that with more follow-up, median of 22.9 months follow-up, we see that survival benefit persists. That the 18-month survival rate was 34% with atezolizumab versus 21% with chemotherapy, a difference of 13% at 18 months. And we're hoping that that uh, difference is maintained as more time passes, uh, though we do have to wait to see with more follow-up how long the two-year, three-year, five-year survival difference will be. Um, what we also saw was some work in biomarkers. And we know from the original presentation of Empower 133 that the use of blood-based tumor mutational burden, blood TMB, did not discriminate patients who would respond or who would benefit from atezolizumab versus not. We saw a benefit with atezolizumab whether you were above or below the TMB threshold, whether you used 10 or 16 mutations per megabase. And so TMB wasn't useful in identifying who are the patients that are getting that benefit. But we know it's a subset. We know a subset of patients is likely driving that benefit. And so the next marker to look at was PDL1 expression. And so what we saw with Empower 133 is first, most samples were not evaluable for PDL1, and most samples were PDL1 negative. In fact, if you look at PDL1 expression on the tumor, 95% were PDL1 negative. If you included PDL1 expression on the immune cells in the microenvironment, that increased to about 50%, but it did not play a predictive role. PDL1 expression was not useful in identifying who would derive that benefit from atezolizumab. And in a similar session, we saw from Caspian, PDL1 expression results from that study were almost identical. Again, 95% of samples were PDL1 negative. When you look just at the tumor, when you look at the immune cells, the rate of PDL1 positivity goes up, but PDL1 expression did not identify who would benefit from the addition of dervalimab to chemotherapy. And so we are left in a state where we were before. In all comer population, we see a benefit, and PDL1 does not help identify who's getting that benefit. I believe there is a biomarker that is going to be much more elusive than PDL1 or TMB. Right now, those should not play a role in selecting patients to, to derive benefit from this therapy. We know that the addition of dervalimab improved survival. What the, we were still waiting to hear was what was the impact on quality of life. And so at ESMO 2019, we saw reported some patient reported outcome data. We saw that the arm that received dervalimab did have a slower time to deterioration, important PRO. We saw that specific outcomes such as dyspnea, several other symptoms did seem to, to decline slower with the addition of dervalimab. And so this positive impact on patient reported outcomes, which had previously been shown with Empower 133 as well, is very supportive of this regimen that we are improving survival and we assume that we are making patients' lives better and this shows us that we are.